Guys, great to have you with us. On an important day, Michael, a lot of discussion about what kind of changes in policy trajectories there may be if Congress goes red. Um, how important is it, do you think, uh, let's say over the next uh, 6 to 12 months? Well, I think if Republicans take one or both chambers of Congress, what you're going to learn there is that there's limited possibility for further fiscal expansion in the U.S. Uh, why that's important is because it, it takes off the table any type of risk that fiscal policy and the Fed policy would be working against one another in fighting inflation. That ultimately is probably pretty friendly for the bond markets. Now, I don't expect you would see a rally in bonds in the short term on that type of outcome because this is also very much the expected outcome with polls and prediction market probabilities heavily flagging already that this is the likely outcome. Interesting. Uh, Jim, you had a great piece yesterday speaking of uh, the bond market and how it's changed over time, and yet the S&P's managed to hold on to the flat line over five months, uh, sort of being able to absorb uh, a lot of negative news. Yeah, Carl, I mean, this market fell straight south for five and a half months till mid-June, and, and now it's been flat for the last five months. It went way up, came way down, but it's, it's held it. And, you know, you think about all the bad news we've had over this last five months. The funds rate in June was 1 percent. Now it's 4 percent. We've had four supra 75 basis points hikes by the Fed. The bond 10-year yield has gone from three, three and a quarter to four, four and a quarter. Uh, Two-year yield's gone up even more. Uh, we've had a lot of bad inflation reports over that period of time. We've, we've had a, a, just a persistent, uh, you know, hawkish talk from the Fed cabal. And then we've had a, you know, the, the corporate community has come out with a with a regular uh, talk talking point about how we're uh, headed for an imminent recession. And yet here we are, uh, flat over those five months. And I think that that may may be a signal that this bull is starting to repair. And the leadership of late has been better too. It's been more cyclical sectors, small caps, low quality stocks, not the headliner tech issues. So. Maybe it looks more like we're headed to a new recovery than a new recession. Michael, I'm just reading your note. A Republican win may not create near term market volatility, but does introduce situational risks in 2023. You go on to talk about the possibility of something like a Budget Control Act of 2011 uh, potentially rematerializing. It's something I, I pay attention to pretty closely, mm -hmm. given the defense sector and military spending that, that I cover on this network. Walk me through what those risks could be. Yeah, well, Republican leadership has been pretty plain about the uh, the idea that they'd like to use debt ceiling negotiations and other government funding deadlines as leverage points to try and reduce overall government spending. Now, we, we've seen these types of events over the last decade. Typically, you don't have substantial market reactions to them. You did back in 2011. I think it's important to pay attention this time because these types of events would be happening amidst a weak economic backdrop like you had in 2011. Uh, what that means is that risks are skewed towards fiscal tightening, which, of course, is sort of pulling in the same direction as monetary policy. It goes back to the original point, which is if Republicans take one chamber of Congress or both, that gives you a divided government. The net policy outcome is probably friendly to bond markets. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.